is up everyone, Nick here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer. And we're also going to be building some throwable Helldivers 2 props using Bamboo Lab's TPU for AMS, as well as their 95A TPU. So a few weeks ago, Bamboo Lab reached out to me and they asked me if I wanted to check out their A1. And I jumped at the opportunity because they were offering me the AMS Lite with it. And one thing I really wanted to try out with this combo was their TPU for AMS, which released sometime in November, 2024. Because in my previous video where I showed off the stratagem ball that I built, a lot of people asked me if it was throwable. So that got me thinking, how would I make a throwable prop without it breaking? And the first thing that popped to mind was TPU. Now, if you don't know it, TPU is a flexible material that can be 3D printed on FDM 3D printers. But one thing I really wanted to do was to 3D print multicolor TPU prints because then I would get the flexibility of the TPU without the need for painting my props. But the one issue is you can't really 3D print TPU in multi-material units like the AMS Lite, meaning you can't really make a multicolor TPU 3D print. Now there are certain 3D printers that could achieve this using multiple tool heads, but since all of Bamboo Lab's machines for the time being at least use only one tool head, regular TPU like 95 a shore hardness will jam up the machine when it tries switching between the different filaments, which is why I really want to try out their TPU for AMS, which is a harder shore hardness of TPU. If I remember correctly, it's about 60A, which is the hardness of a caster wheel, which is really, really hard, but it is flexible enough that it should be impact resistant depending on the 3D print, which is what brings us to this video today with the A1 and the AMS Lite. I've already 3D printed a bunch of parts for different props from Held Divers 2 out of TPU for AMS and TPU 95A, but before we get to assembling those and testing them out, I'm going to be covering my first experiences with the A1. So unboxing this printer was an absolute breeze and assembling it was just as easy. One thing that really stood out to me was how the two halves of the 3D printer screw together. Usually with bed slinger 3D printers, you need to flip the base of the printer so you can screw the gantry on from underneath it. But with the A1, you actually sit the base of the printer inside the gantry itself, and then you remove a cover and screw the two halves together from above, which is way easier. And once the 3D printer was connected, all I had to do was connect it to the Wi-Fi and go through the calibration process so I could start printing. And one of the first things that really caught my eye was just how fast this 3D printer was and how the print quality turned out. Between all the different calibrations the A1 does, like dynamic flow calibration, bed leveling, vibration compensation, and automatic Z offset, the printer manages to keep up with Bamboo Lab's Core XY 3D printers with speedy prints and print quality. Like seriously, this Benchy is pretty top notch. The bottom layer is perfect. You can make out the text on the back for the most part. The overhangs and bridging are nearly all perfect and there's little to no ghosting around these holes. And with my first calibration print done, I immediately jumped into 3D printing all the TPU parts I would need for this project. So today we're going to be 3D printing the G6 Frag, the G12 High Explosive, and my personal favorite against the bots, the G123 Thermite. All of these files were 3D modeled by Mystery Makers, and you can get these files from wireframe3d.com. I'll leave links in the description to the files. Now, when it came to 3D printing the parts out of TPU for AMS, I just used the filament presets that were already available in Bamboo Slicer and made zero changes to them. And I also added a few supports when needed onto some of the parts, although most of the parts were very creatively split apart to avoid the need for supports as much as possible. Now, one thing I really enjoyed about using the TPU for AMS is that the spools included RFID tags, which means that the AMS light was able to recognize when a spool was loaded and what kind of filament was loaded. So not only is this super useful for multicolor 3D printing, but it's also really useful from a workflow perspective. Because even if I'm not 3D printing something in multiple filaments, I can just load all of my most used filaments onto the AMS slots. And when I'm sending prints to the 3D printer, I can just pick and choose which filaments I want to use for that specific print. Meaning I don't have to constantly load load and unload filament from the printer. But even then, if I need to unload the filament from the AMS light, it's already pre-cut and removed from the extruder. So I don't need to heat up the hot end to remove the filament, it's already been done when it finished its last print job. And on top of that, since this is my second Bamboo Lab 3D printer that I own, I finally got the chance to take full advantage of the Bamboo Slicer workflow by being able to send different print jobs to different 3D printers and being able to track the progress of my prints with Bamboo Handy on my phone. Now my only other experience with 
with a 3D printer that has a multi-material system like the AMS Lite, whereas the Prusa Mark IV S with its MMU3 system. And the two are really comparable because they're both bed slingers of a comparable size with a separate unit to handle the multi-material system. However, the MMU3 system is just not nearly as practical as the AMS Lite. Now here's why. For starters, the Mark IV S and its MMU3 take a whole bunch of space compared to the A1 combo. Now the A1 combo, you have the 3D printer itself and you have the AMS Lite directly next to it. With the Mark IV S, you have the multi-material unit on top of the machine and then you have the cartridges right next to the printer where the AMS Lite is and next to those cartridges, you have five different spool holders. So yeah, my experience so far with the A1 and the AMS Lite has been nothing short of fantastic. So if you guys would like a full in-depth video of the A1 and the AMS Lite in the future, please let me know in the comments down below. And while you're at it, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button. So that pretty much covers all my thoughts on the A1 and AMS Lite for this video. Thank you again to Bamboo Lab for sending this machine over for this project. And I'll also have an affiliate link in the description if you want to pick one up. Now let's get to actually building our throwable props. So here we have all the parts that we're going to need to build all of our different throwable props. On this side of the table, I have some parts 3D printed out of TPU for AMS. And on the other side of the table, I have TPU 95A parts. Now, one thing I really want to highlight is the support removal for TPU for AMS is incredibly easy. Now this is with the regular presets from Bamboo Slicer and this stuff just comes out in incredibly easy. <laughs> so you might be wondering, Nick, how are we going to glue everything together? Or you might not be wondering that because the answer has been on the table the whole time or you already knew it. But regardless, we're going to be using some yellow ABS cement. Now this is specifically made for bonding ABS pipes for plumbing. Now I did a little bit of research online and apparently the same chemical compounds that are in this can not only weld ABS parts together, but they can also weld TPU together. And I've already tried this and it works extremely well. I use that stuff to bond these two parts together for the frag grenade and it's it's never coming apart ever again. It is permanently fused together. But besides the TPU we're going to be using today for our 3D printed parts, we're also going to be using some SLS printed aluminum for the lever arms. Now there is quite literally no other reason I went with this option other than I wanted a more realistic feel. Because not only does it feel like metal, because it is, but when it flies off the grenades, it makes an incredibly satisfying sound. Let me show you. That's pretty sick. And you can get your very own 3D printed metal parts from this channel sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is the industry leader when it comes to PCB manufacturing and 3D printing solutions. From custom circuit boards to innovative 3D printed prototypes, PCBWay offers unparalleled quality, fast turnaround times, and competitive pricing. Now, not everything we're going to be using for these props is going to be 3D printed. For example, the release pins on the grenades themselves are actually going to be actual release pins. Now, Mystery Makers did include files for 3D 3D printing the release pins. I tried on multiple occasions to 3D print them, but this piece always ended up failing. And I tried a bunch of different orientations with supports, without supports. So I figured, why would I settle for a 3D printed part that might fail when I could literally just buy my very own release pins that are fairly cheap. So I just ended up taking some quick measurements of the 3D printed part and the 3D model of the quick release pin and I ordered these. Now these are five millimeters in diameter by 28 millimeters in length. So I'll be leaving links to these quick release pins in the description down below along with the compression springs you're going to need to get that release of the lever. So these are five millimeters in diameter by 20 millimeters in height and I just used a little bit of super glue to glue it into the hole for the spring. So that pretty much covers all the hardware and the glues we're going to need to build these. Now all we need to do is to actually glue them together. So initially when I was filming this assembly process for all the different props, I was going to explain step by step how I glue each and every piece, but honestly, it's super repetitive. The only thing you need to keep in mind when gluing all these parts together is to not add too much ABS cement or else it will overflow into the cracks. If you can get your hands on clear ABS cement, I would definitely go with that since if you do have some overflow, it won't be yellow. So after 3D printing all these props and finally assembling them, here are my thoughts on TPU for AMS and TPU 95A. So here I have the high explosive, the frag grenade, and the thermite that were 3D printed in TPU for AMS. And they make for really rigid and great drop-proof props depending on the design. So for example, we have the frag grenade 
grenade here, and we also have the high explosive. Now these two came out phenomenally, especially the frag grenade, since this is the only one that I actually 3D printed in multicolor. The yellow stripes and the white skulls are absolutely gorgeous. And it didn't take that much time to 3D print either. If I remember correctly, it took about five hours and quite a bit of filament purging, but for what it's worth, this thing looks great. So I'm pretty happy with it. And on the other hand, we have the high explosive, which also came out great. All the parts were super easy to print. There were very minimal supports needed to 3D print everything. And both of these props are just absolutely solid. There's like zero squish to them. So I feel pretty confident dropping these. The only issue is since there is little to no flex, you might get some damage along the thinner parts of your 3D prints. Because for some reason, the layer adhesion is just not nearly as good as regular TPU, which became obvious to me when I 3D printed the thermite grenade. So everything was well and good. I 3D printed the handle, I flexed on it a little bit, and I was really satisfied with just how solid it felt, but that was until I assembled everything. Once I glued everything down, I did the exact same thing, and it just split along the layer line. Now I did manage to glue it back together, but I don't think I would recommend TP for AMS for 3D printing thin and long parts, especially when forces are going to be applied along the layer lines, because as soon as the part reaches its threshold, it will just snap in half. So TPU for AMS definitely has its use cases. It does provide a little bit of flex and impact resistance while also allowing you to 3D print in multicolor. You just have to determine whether it's right for your project. But if you don't need to 3D print in multicolor, but still want some flex, TPU95A is still an excellent choice. So let me move this to the side here and let's talk about these two props I 3D printed in TPU95A. So of course we have the stratagem beacon here, which are the exact same files I used in the last video, just 3D printed in TPU. And I reprinted the high explosive just to be able to compare directly with the other one, which was 3D printed in TPU for AMS. And this was pretty tedious to glue together since there's just so many parts, but I managed and I let everything cure for over half a day and now it's just absolutely solid. Like I have tried off camera to split some of these parts off from the other prints, Yeah, they're not coming apart ever again. That really hurt my finger. I especially like how the strategy ball turned out because this thing just feels like a softball and it bounces like you wouldn't believe. It's insane. Let me just move this aside. Like you can really get it to bounce. Do you think Helldivers do this with their strategy balls? And same thing with the high explosive. This thing feels amazing in the hand. It's honestly very comparable to a stress relief toy because like you can just squish this thing in the hand and it just flexes like crazy. And if that weren't good enough, of course you have the metal lever, which was 3D printed by PCBWay. And when it flies off, it makes for the most satisfying noise you've ever heard. Check this out. That's pretty good. Now with everything we've learned today when it comes to TPU and TPU for AMS, I think the next logical step is going to be combining what we've learned today with the electronics I've already worked on in previous Helldivers 2 props. That way we can make the most realistic Helldivers 2 props possible. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And a huge thank you again to Bamboo Lab for providing me with the A1 combo for this project and to PCBWay for sponsoring this channel and for sponsoring this video as well. And I'll see you all in the next one.